Hello everyone, welcome back to this back off AX8000 motion control series video. And in this video, I would like to discuss the number 8, how can we implement the twin safe SS1, safe stop 1 for the AX8000 drive motion system. And SS1 safety stop 1 is very common safe function to immediately stop the access when we press e-stop or when we open the safety gate. This is a very common safety function to guarantee the drive system to be safe for the people. So SS1. And if you recall from the number two video, we discussed how can we implement the STO safety torque off function. Difference between the STO and the SS1, if you recall from the STO, its name is a safety torque off. When you implement the safety torque off function, you will find one issue here. So when you hit the e-stop, or the STO signal de-energized, you will find the drive will lose the torque and then you will see the drive will run down by itself because that time you turn off the torque totally. But the system and the mechanical system, it also have an inertia inside. So that's why the drive will still travel a very short distance and basically free run down by itself. Some cases is a little bit dangerous still. That's why we involve the SS1 safety stop function. With this SS1 function, when we hit the e-stop or open the safety gate, so the drive can be stopped as quick as it can, and then the torque will be killed. So the drive can be controlled to stop as quick as it can. This is the key difference between the STO. The STO is just to kill the torque, so the drive will freely to stop. Before we start the STO program, let's quickly review the STO safety program where we at. And if we go to the process image, we will see this is the access A and the access B. We will see the STO function. Then you will feel very confused. Uh, looks like the system only has STO function. It doesn't have SS1 or uh, SBT, the safety brake. This is a very common question when you first time use the twin safe and the back off drive to implement the SS1. So to answer this question, we can go to one menu. Then you can browse the website backoff.com. And from this search, so you can find a keyword application guide twin safe. Click search. And then you will find this. So twin safe application guide. Try to find the latest version. For example, this one. Basically, when you try to implement the twin safe, the program, especially for the different safety level, for example, category three or the category four. So this is the typical menu you can reference. And then from here, we can search SS1. Then you will find one example, drive option AX5000 with SS1 stop function. If we click here, we will find this is the typical example from Baikal. And this example that come from AX5000 and AX5000 and AX8000, they are quite similar, okay? And then you can read detail on this paragraph. So the key idea to implement the SS1 and the STO, we will use this delay function. The basic idea is this. So when the e-stop function block disable the SS1 signal, so the SS1 signal will go to the PLC logic. For example, use the NC power, disable the NC axis. In the real practice, you can use a curve to measure how long your axis will be stopped. For example, if you assume that it's a one second or 500 milliseconds, and then we can put this time and this delay. This means firstly, we will disable the MC power. And then after this timer, we will kill the torque, de-energize the STO. The power disable allows the drive system can be controlled with the torque to totally stop quickly. And then we kill the torque. This is the very key idea here. And if we can find out the EL72, this dash line shows much clearer. We will use this e-stop output, direct output, to disable the NC power. And after this 1,000 milliseconds, so we will de-energize the STO signal. This is a similar idea. Okay, now let's go back to the program and let me show how can we implement this SS1. Before we start SS1 safety stop function, 
I highly recommend you can review the MB22 CP torque off the twin save function in my channel. You can search MB22 this name. And in this video, I will base on this STO program and to implement the SS1. All right, let's shift to the TwinCat project and the TwinSafe program. And this is the program we implement the STO function. And that time I use this safe e-stop function block and we connected the e-stop signal at this e-stop input one and two. And when we implement the STO function, this drive STO enable signal that connect to the e-stop output here. And as shown in the manual, in this video, the key idea, we will move this drive STO to here, this line. And the STO will be de-energized after this delay time. And this e-stop output will control the SS1 enable signal. And the SS1 enable signal will be used to connect to the NC power on, to power on or disable the power for the access. Okay, this is the key idea. Now, let's start. Okay, we move to this line first. Drive STO. This is the after the delay time. Okay, that basically named the drive SS1. And because this is the drive SS1 will be used to connect from the city program to the NC access, that MC power on function block enable signal. So we will create the interface at this alias device area. So that is the output signal from the city to the standard PLC. Okay, let's create one alias device name. Okay, add new item. We will create a digital output to standard PLC. We can name CD output as one. Well. Okay, that means this signal come from the city and go to the standard PLC. And this function that's used for as one. Well. And at here, we can create another variable. We can name SF underscore output underscore drive as one. Well. Okay, and after we create this drive S1, we will see here at this variable mapping area, it will create one variable. And from this variable here, from this mapping, we will connect to the alias name we just created. Using this variable mapping function, we will connect this safety variable SF underscore output drive S1 to the alias variable here. It named SF output S1. So we select this. So when the safety control this signal, this safety S1 signal turn on or turn off, it will connect to this variable. And this interface, this alias name here, we will config to link this interface alias device to a variable from the standard PLC. Okay. Okay, we connect from here to here first. And then let's move up to the standard PLC side. We will declare one variable. This variable will be used to receive that enable signal from this alias here. So we will declare this AT, that's the input I. Let's save and build the solution. Okay, make sure this is the I input. All right, next step, we will connect this alias device, this interface here to this variable. Okay, double click and link to. So we just declared this after the build solution. So the system will generate this variable name and make sure this variable, that's the input. So that's why we created the output from this safety. And this is the input of the standard PLC. So output to this input. Okay, so we config this link to. All right, we link this. And then let's go to the PLC logic MC function blocks here. And from this MC power, we will evolve that enable signal from the CT SS1. So this CT enable, we will evolve this global variable list CT dot the SS1 CT enable, okay? 
positive and the negative will all enable. Okay. And using this way, once the SS1 turn on, the SS1 from this variable list, we connect to this SF output SS1. And this SF output SS1 is configured with the input enable signal from the standard PLC. That's why this S1 can enable the MC power. And when this S1 de-energized, the MC power will be also disabled. So the system will execute the stop. And after 100 milliseconds here, then the STU signal will from on to off to kill the torque. This is the basically key idea. This is the basic idea to implement the SS1 and the STO, and this is the timing. And basically this time is shorter the better, but we still need to consider the drive inertia, right? We need to allow the drive has a certain time to totally stop. All right, after we configure everything, we can build the solution and click this downstairs active configuration. We can download all the configuration to the controller. And after this active configuration, we download the hardware, then we can download the safety controller. We need to go back to here and check this series number. Okay, username and serial number. You need to match this serial number, okay? And password, that's a twin safe. Okay, click next. Click next. Okay. And password will type in the password again. Twin safe. T S F E a capital. Okay. We download the safety program. And eventually let's download active configuration. Download the hardware configuration again. Okay. Restart the project. So make sure we download the safety, we log in the latest program, the standard PLC program, and eventually we active configuration, download the hardware configuration. So all your global variable list can be updated, can be downloaded. All right, now the controller is running and we can online the safety program. Okay, and we will Acknowledge this restart first, and now we can see the SS1 and the STO here, they all on. So the safety is enabled, and now we can turn on the drive. And once we press the e stop and we kill the e stop signal, so the SS1 will from on to off at first. And that time, because this SS1 disabled, so the drive MC power will also disable the drive will stop immediately. And after 500 milliseconds, so the STO will turn from on to off. So the STO will de-energized and torque will be off. All right, let's go back to the MC power. And this is the MC program. And before we execute this MC power, we can go to the drive manager and we can go to the run motor active this online recording. Okay, so we can see this online recording and we can turn on the torque. Meantime, we can watch this torque value change. And now we can see this MC power, this safety enable, this is on, okay? And let's enable the MC power. So now the drive is enabled. We can execute this MC velocity and start to run the motor. And now we ask you this MC velocity. Now this drive is running at 1800, okay? And then I'm going to press the e-stop. In the meantime, we can watch this SS1 and STO timing. See? So SS1 will turn off first and 500 milliseconds after, so STO goes off. This time the drive can be stopped immediately. Okay, let's turn on again, reset, and let's enable the drive again. 
And if we try to start again, so we have to reset the MC error first, and then we enable the MC power and trigger the MC velocity to start the drive. Okay, we execute this MC reset. Okay, now there's no error. And now we can execute this MC velocity. And now the drive is running. Then let's go back to this drive manager. So now the drive is running at 1800. And this time, let's watch again. E stop. So we can see the SS1 from on to off first. And after 500 milliseconds, STO from on to off. Okay. During this 500 milliseconds, so we will disable the MC power and the drive will stop immediately. And 500 milliseconds after STO from on to off, the energized, so the torque will be off totally. Okay, let's go to the MC power so we can see this enable signal is off now. The drive is stopped. Okay, and the drive internally is show up 4260, this fault. We can reveal how the motor got stopped in a short time when we press E stop. The torque we did two times E stop, SQ, the SS1. So we can see this two times when we press E stop. So the torque got negative, very huge. That's because the drive will try to stop the motor as quick as it can. So we can see this negative torque. This is a short time the drive try to stop the motor. So we will see this two negative peak here. And if we zoom this area, the drive will ask you the negative torque to stop the motor at first. And then we ask you the STO. That's why this line, this is a torque zero. Okay, with this SS1 and with this 500 milliseconds, so the drive system will try to stop the motor in a very short time using this negative torque. And then the torque will be killed after 500 milliseconds. STO is de-energized. Okay, so this is a key idea for the SS1. All right, this is the basic idea to implement the SS1 and the STO. Keep in mind, this SS1 and the STO, there will be a very short time to allow the drive system to stop itself, and this delay time basically is very short. Okay, and after this SS1, disable the MC power, and then we will ask you the STO after. Again, highly recommend you can review this menu application guide twin safe and read the drive STO and SS1 section. All right, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.